Brendan. Alex. How you feeling? I'm here. Um, it's been a few minutes since your fight. Um, yeah, it's been a little minute, huh? How do you feel about your performance? I'm pissed that I let him go under and try to go for that calf slicer. I didn't think he was going to do it, so I didn't really focus too much on, on any of that. Um, lesson learned. Uh, I find my way out even not training that position. <laughs> but uh, muscle memory, I guess. It is what it is. Uh, I got the win, so it is what it is. I think I did well outside of that one position. Uh, but it's a little stretched probably. I don't think it's anything major. I've, I th I've had worse. Uh, but we'll go get it checked out, and it doesn't matter. Either way, I wasn't planning to fight till April anyway, so <laughs> I'm ready to be MIA for a little bit. Don't hit my line. So, Unless you're Dana White. Dana or Hunter or Mick or Ali, y'all can hit my line, especially if it's money. If we're talking money, you can hit my line. So that's what happened when you had him in that rear naked choke. He, he was, had your calf in the second round? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's like a calf slicer, but a calf slicer kind of like implodes the knee. It puts like a fulcrum in between. Uh, but for some reason, I feel it more in just my ankle. Um, but, yeah, it's, I know it's nothing major because as I sit down and then get up, it loosens up and it's pretty much normal. So um, we'll just go get it checked out. Like I said, I felt it like a little pops, but that could be tendon stretching. Like I said, I've had way worse. I've tore ligaments in my feet and in my ankles multiple times through my times in jiu-jitsu. So, um I knew when it was popping that it was pr probably tendons or ligaments or whatever. I ain't no doctor, but um, I knew that's all he had on the extension and the pull. I felt him struggling to, like, get harder and tighter, but I ain't no bitch. Did it feel good to tap out Paul Craig? Um, I think, you know, during media day, he was kind of like, I don't know, he kind of, like, was underestimating your grappling. He was saying that you, you were going to probably try and knock him out, but to, 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 go, to go in there and tap him out, did that feel good? I almost knocked him out, too. My knee kind of gave out a little bit there uh, when, when I – I think it was the second round. But, um, man, I don't worry about what people say. We're, any mouth can say anything. So it's different when you're in there with me. It's different when you feel how strong I am, when you feel the technique that I have. Even that was me being lazy and not giving him much respect um, in that position. That's the only reason he got it because I don't give him respect in, in that scenario. Um, He's a triangle and an armbar guy. I don't think if I don't think you've seen him get one or even come close to one. So, look at his face and look at mine. We'll see who's got the better grappling. I I think we answered that question just however long ago. You were tagging him on the feet. Did you feel more comfortable on the ground with him, or was it just kind of like a, just a split dis, split decision to, to go down there? I finished. What are you talking about? Split decision? Come on, Alex. <laughs> no. Uh, um, I just felt it was easier there. I wasn't really in danger. I just had to be aware, and um, he didn't possess anything that I've ever that I've never seen before. He wasn't strong. I was expecting more. Um, only thing he did good was he did the lockdown. And he was longer, so he could stretch it more. Um, other than that, that's really the only thing that I can <laughs> recall that he did well. To be honest, uh, he's tough. But I think at the end of the second when I got the rear naked, because in the first he wouldn't turn to his, his turtle or he wouldn't turn and give me his back. So I knew he, he didn't want to be there, but I knew in the second when he gave it to me and I slipped the choke in real quick, I told him when that round was up, you got lucky. You got lucky. Um, but I knew when he went to his back again, he, he wanted out. I knew he wanted out. He's tough, but he wanted out. It's just uh, that simple. During weigh-ins, you told him to keep that same energy, don't pull guard. So did he keep that same energy? I don't remember. Did he pull guard? Did he? I don't remember. Um, I know he shot. I know I stuffed it. But um, no, I thought he. I thought he. He was gonna come in out for a dog fight, and I was willing to stand right there and let it go. Although, that's in my heart. It'll always be there. I had that dog when I need to. I didn't want to bring. I wanted to come out, and I wanted to fight better. I didn't. Maybe, maybe he was the better fighter, right? But I just had to fight better tonight, and um, I was trying to be smart. And I was trying to dance around the outside, get my movement, make him miss, feel his, his energy and how he hit, his, his, uh, his strength, his tempo. I was trying to feel that out. I, I try to play chess, not checkers. And I think that's where the difference in levels lies. And um, when I want to turn it up, I can turn it up. And when I want to bring him to my level, I can bring him to my level. And I think that's what makes me who I am. After the fight, you called for a number one contender fight. Um, you get your... If it, 
If you were, if you were to get your choice <laughs> today, Junior. If you were to get your choice, would it be Whitaker? Would it be Hamzat? Um, either or. Whoever Mick Hunter and Dana say, that's who we're fighting. Whoever they say that if you win this, you're guaranteed a title shot. That's who I'm fighting. Name doesn't matter. I've worked my ass off to get here. I've sacrificed so much to get here in my personal life and every other part of my life. Um, I'm going to go home. I'm going to go hunting. I'm going to be a dad. We're going to have a good time. Uh, we're going to enjoy the holidays. And come April, or hopefully around that time, hopefully UFC 300, um, I I'm coming. I'm coming. Uh, 2024, I knew I still stand by that. He said, uh, you know, you, you've been fighting three times a year for, for your first however many years in the UFC. Are you trying to kind of take it? take a step back and finally fight twice a year now yeah for sure I, I i got to be home a little bit with my kids uh well more than normal and uh they're they're the meaning of life they're getting older they're getting bigger that's why it's so great to have her here i can't wait for her sister to get old enough and have her here but um it makes me not want to leave whatsoever it makes me want to be home more it makes me sometimes want to walk away from all this um it really does the money's great this feeling is great. Having my, my friends here with me is great, but um, nothing on this planet will ever match that feeling that I get with them. They're the, they're the number one in my life over everything, and uh, yeah, that's what I'm chasing. I'm chasing these, uh, these moments with that, with that little one and her sister, and uh, hopefully more to come as well whenever that, that happens. Um, I've always wanted a big family. Uh, this is just a, a means to an end. The fighting, yeah, it's great. I love to do it. I'm super competitive. I'm very blessed. I'm very thankful to be here. But um, it's a means to an end. I know what I want. I know what my final vision is for my life and their life. And uh, the moment I make that happen is the moment I walk out of here no matter what happens. I know if everything plays out right, by 35, I'm gone. And uh, I'll go ahead and say it now. Y'all can put it on record. I'll walk out of here with a, with a loss, and I will never look back whatsoever. I know how competitive I am, and uh, it'll take a loss after being a champion to walk out. And uh, I'll do it with a smile on my face, money in the bank, and my kid having, having a great future ahead of her along with her sister. So uh, that's my goal. That's my plan. And uh, I'm sacrificing now to get it because hopefully by the time she's 10 years old or less, daddy's her biggest cheerleader, and uh, – we're traveling, doing whatever it is that she finds that she loves and wants to do, and uh, that's the ultimate goal. And finally, for me, with the UFC going back on, out on the road, you've been asking for a UFC Louisiana, Louisiana UFC New Orleans. Um, I know DP was in the house watching you fight. I my mean, dog. Is that what you want next year? Yeah, for sure. I definitely want a UFC Louisiana. I don't care where it's at. Only guy that's going to headline over me is that man that was out there. That's my boy, the Diamond. Um, He's a big motivation for me. Hopefully next year we'll start working together more. Hopefully I'll make him a part of my team even more. And, um, ah, man, I never had enough great things to say about that guy. So uh, he's a role model to so many in Louisiana. I'm trying to follow in his footsteps and do even better if it's possible. Um, so hopefully me and him, UFC, Louisiana, anywhere in it, I'm going to put on for the home team, put on for the boot, and uh, I hope we can do it. Hey, Brennan. Um, I noticed that... While you were waiting to weigh in yesterday, Paul came and kind of stared you down. What was that moment like for you? I mean, again, I ain't no bitch. I ain't going to back down from no man. I'm not scared of any man. We're going to fight. So it was just like, yo, why are you going to mean bug me right now? Like, you just stepped off the scale. I know that. I know you can't take a punch right now. Um, but it is what it is. I feel it's, it was, it's, it's all a facade for him to make himself feel good. And that's what he needs to feel good. I don't need that. I'm confident in myself. I'm confident in my abilities. I know what I came here to do. And um, I just stay in my lane and do what I need to do. And I don't care. Do whatever you need to do. As long as you don't touch me, we're fine. And it looked like you had something to say for him when you were coming up out of the finish. Was that something you can share with us? Do you remember? I don't even remember. I told him he was tough. Like, yeah, thanks for thanks for the fight. Like, tough guy. But like I said in the in the, in the cage. My boy Piper over there want next, so I feel bad for him <laughs> if that's what happens. My boy Piper gonna light him up. And you said you want to stay out until April. Is there a specific card that you're eyeing in April? I hope the UFC 300. I think that'd be a pretty cool event. I've uh, 
obviously I main evented now, done it short notice before. I fought all these guys. Uh, I think it'd be pretty cool. I don't have like this big social media following because I'm just a redneck, I guess. But um, that, that might help. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, no, I'd just be cool to be a part of an event like that. Have a lot of eyes, a lot of things going on. And uh, yeah, my, sh my stuff would probably fly under the radar. But again, it's just an experience. I'm trying to chase experiences because no matter what, I'm 27. I'm going to be 28 in a month or so. I haven't even hit my prime yet. So the best years, the best moments are still to come. I'm just trying to take one step at a time, enjoy every moment, be in the moment, because this could be gone tomorrow. It could be gone when I hop on a flight tomorrow. I don't, I don't know. But um, I'm just thankful to be here. Uh, I'm thankful to share with my friends, my kid, and uh, I'm just very thankful to be here. And you have a teammate that has a big fight next week at PFL. I'm just curious if you want to give him any words of advice or any uh, thoughts on how that fight will go. Impa, he's trained his butt off. I worked with him. He's got all the skills. I hope he just goes out there, sticks to his game plan, stays calm, and just beat Impa. Impa is good enough, and uh, I hope he goes out there and becomes a millionaire. I'm definitely rooting for him. We'll be watching. I think Tuco will be there. Joe will be there. And... Um, Man, I can't wait. I really, really, really want him to win. I really want him to become a millionaire. He's such a good guy, a good person. And uh, I hope that for him and his family. Thank you. Yeah, and just, just one in the back. If this is the final Apex card for 2023. How does uh, preparing to fight in that smaller cage affect your training or any way that you start the fight here on fight night? I feel like I've been here so many times. I, I'm probably the king of the apex right now. I think I have the most fights, maybe. I don't know these statistics by heart, but I think I have the most fights here now. And uh, I can fight. I can fight anywhere. You pay me to fight, I'll fight in that parking lot. I'll fight in that, that, that room out there. So um, the nerves are always there, of course. But, again, I'm not scared of any man. I fear no man. Uh, I'm not scared to lose. And I'm definitely not scared to win. I'm not scared to go to sleep, and I'm not scared for something to break. So um, I go out there and let the cards fall where they fall. And um, big cage, small cage, it doesn't matter. Yo, two where the statistics at, Baba? You're now 11 and 2 in the UFC. You're 10 and 1 in the division. You have the highest win percentage in the division out of any middleweight with over 10 fights. RNA. What, what do you have to say to the journalists here that may or may not be on the ranking panel? Uh, maybe you haters. <laughs> no, I, I mean, they hating for sure. I would say something, but there's ladies and children present. But, you know, they blocking, you know what I'm saying? They blocking for real, for real. But um, it doesn't matter. The UFC says what happens. These are outside people that vote. And, yeah, they might matter for sponsors or this or that. But when it comes down to who says who's going to fight who, that's the bosses, Dana, Hunter, Mick, and Sean. And uh, they'll make whoever fight whoever. It doesn't matter. We've seen that recently with guys fighting uh, top ten guys that only have one fight. So um, the UFC says who's going to fight and who's not going to fight. Rankings don't say it. They just like to think that. But we all know the truth. Um, so, again, we'll sit down with Dana. We'll sit down with Hunter. We'll sit down with Mick and Sean. And um, we'll see what happens. But I'm here. I'll be back in April. I ain't going nowhere other than hunting. And uh, I'll be back ready to go again. But until then, like I said, my boy Joe's coming. My boy Tuco is ready for 205. Jamal's going to come back next year and get his belt. All my boys are coming. We rolled deep, and uh, we're coming for everybody. We're coming hard. <laughs> <laughs> I know in the cage you said that you, there was a particular thing that you wanted to celebrate with your kids. So I want to see if I could tee it up like they used to do the old commercials. How are you going to celebrate this win? <laughs> Bean, we're going to Disney World. I know. <laughs> yeah, she's so spoiled. She don't care. She knows what she's doing. Oh, yeah. Shout out my boy and new Jason Jackson, Bellator champion. I'm so happy for that guy. We worked hard this camp. He's been working. He had a layoff. I'm so happy for that guy as well as my boy, Rafian Stotts. Got another W there. Uh, they robbed my boy, Sydney. And um, I feel my boy Sergio is going to come back and get that back. But um, the team's doing good. All the homies are doing good. 
it's a uh, it's a good time in life right now. Like I said, I just need my boy Tuco to get signed, and um, life will be good, man. Uh, everything's good. We're finishing off the year strong again. I hope my boy Tuco gets signed. We'll be pushing for that, and Mick, we're gonna have to have a conversation about that, my guy. Just a quick one in the back. There's a lot going on in Vegas. You got a celebration tonight. You're gonna check out any F1 uh, race tonight. It's an early night for you. The race starts at 10 o'clock. Yeah, I would, but uh, I have my little one with me, and they're having a princess party for my manager's kids, and so uh, I want her to have a good time now. We leave tomorrow, so we're going to go to this princess party. We're going to have a good time, and she's going to play with some other little kids her age, and um, yeah, we're going to have a good time. She, it's her night now. We're going to have a good time. All right, thank you guys. Thank you all.